Right, 3 to the 4 times 10 cubed, okay? So the first thing I would do here is work out what 3 to the 4 actually is. So we've got, remember on the power, it tells us how many times we multiply 3 by itself, okay? So we've got that there. And we've got to do this without a calculator, okay? So take your time on it. Um, so 3 times 3, let's work that out first. Of course, it's 9, okay? And then if you times that result by the 3 there, you get 27, yeah, because 9 times 3 is 27. And then you've got that final 3 then to times it by. So you've got to do then 27 times 3, okay? So 27 times 3, well, it's up to you in the margin here. You could add 27 3 times, okay? 7 add 7 add 7 is 21. So 1 carry the 2. And then 2 2 2 is 6 plus the 2 is 8. So 81, yeah? So when you times it by that last three there, you get 81. 10 cubed is a lot easier to work out. Okay, so we've got 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10. There's three of them. Of course, that's going to be straightforward because you've got 10 times 10, which is 100. And times that by 10, you get 1,000. 100 times 10 is 1,000. And when they end in zeros, it's simple, isn't it? Because you just do 1 times 1 times 1 which is one, and there's three zeros here. So you're expecting three in the answer. Don't forget then, finally, right, you have to multiply the two answers you've got. So 81 times then 1,000, okay? So 81 times 1,000, well, you've got 81,000. So again, you could do 81 times one, which is 81, and add on the three zeros, 81,000. Okay, part B, 1 divided by 0 0.5. Now, it looks sort of complicated, but if you think about it, 0 0.5 is just a half, isn't it? Yeah? So, what the question is saying is, how many halves are in 1? When you divide, how many are in here? So, how many halves are in 1? Well, there's going to be 2, isn't it? There's 2 halves make up a whole. If you think about it, two halves there make up the whole circle. So the answer is simply two, okay? Now, another way of sort of thinking about this is, this is, we can think of this obviously as a fraction. It is written as a fraction. What we can do is scale it up so there's a nicer number to work out. So with the bottom here, if I double it, I will get one, yeah? 0 0.5 times two get one, so I double the bottom, but of course you've got to remember then you need to double the top. So one times two then is two. So you get two divided by one, which of course is two. Okay, so two ways of thinking about that there. Um, question C, part C, taking away decimals. So the important thing here is, take your time on it, line up the decimal point, okay? That's key here. Right, if you line up the decimal point, all the other values then will go in their correct places. So the decimal points are lined up here, and we've got then the 5.6, and it says to take away, doesn't it? 3.82. So, when I take away, all right, we obviously start from the right, but again, go down that road of making sure those decimal points are lined up. So, my answer, I'll have my decimal point there. So, I've got to take away. Now, there's nothing there to take away 2. So, I'm better off writing 0 there, right, to show that. 0 take away 2, we can't do, right? So, we need to borrow from that six, make it turn it into a five, and the one that I borrow, okay, taking one from there, put it here, so now I've got 10, I'm like 10 take away two is eight. And we come to this one, now five take away eight, we can't do, okay, can't do five take away eight, so I'm gonna borrow from here, make that a four, and the one that I borrow I put here, so I've got 15 then take away eight, which is seven. And then on this calculation here, 4 take away 3 is 1. With part D, taking away fractions. Now, you've got to get the denominators the same. Okay, so there's a number of ways of doing this. Okay, one way I, I like to do is, is have a look. Can we think of a number the bottom both go into? And sometimes it's straightforward. For instance here, they both go into 6, don't they? So I can keep 5 over 6 as it is, but I'm going to change 2 over 3. Okay. And I'm going to make it so it's 6. Now think about what I've done there to make it 6. I've got to double the bottom, haven't I? So that means then I double the top. So if I double the bottom to get 6, I double the top. And 2 times 2 is 4. So if 
five over six then is what I had to start with, which I don't need to change. Take away then two thirds, which I changed to be four over six. And when you work that out then, just take away the tops. So five take away four is one, and it's out of six, okay? So five six take away four six is one sixth. Finally then, part E, okay? Multiplying decimals, okay? So the quick way of doing this is realizing, look, two times three is six, so you ignore the decimal points, yeah? Um, you just cheat the numbers as whole, two times three is six, and then realize, go to the question, there are two decimal places in my question. So my answer, I need two decimal places, okay? So I'm gonna write six as zero six, and that will be my two decimal places. The decimal point goes there, zero in front. So my answer is 0 0.06.